Um, again, missing mother, family who's missing the mother and the, and the child as well. This child was assuring me that her mother will come back for Christmas to bring her the red winter jacket as she promised for her Christmas present. The mother was trafficked through Ukraine. It was really sad to look at all these people who are longing and who are keeping the memory of the missing alive, but still I think the images of the women who are gone are fading away. This is a scene when the, the older brother tricks the, the little sister, the younger sister, that he's talking to their mother and she's waiting patiently to speak to their mother, but he's just tricking her. He's, um, he was just playing a joke to her. So this is the, the stage where they reach, you know, it's kind of natural, the mother is gone, you know. It's, it's very, very sad. Again, when I photographed um, the women who managed to survive, to escape and survive trafficking, uh, some accepted me to photograph them, but it was quite clear for me that it wasn't their wish to, to show themselves and to expose themselves. So others did tell me, yes, you can photograph me. Uh, yes, you can show my face. Some said, oh, as long as it's not in the village newspaper, you can show, you can photograph me. But it was obvious that here um, the, the woman was shy and she didn't want to say that she would rather not expose herself. So I, I wanted, I looked at everything around them, you know, as in this child never knowing that his sister was trafficked and never knowing the, the sorrow of, of his sister. So kind of like life goes on. This is not only this is a documentary project. I hope it shows as well the 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 space where the phenomenon is taking place, um, and the passport. Dal is showing me her passport. Their key to the world of dreams uh, that they are hoping to have, and actually at the same time, it's um, it's not an escape, but it's just um, it's the the key that locks the door for them. This is in UK. I wanted to look at the spaces again and the places where these women who are missing are at the moment. I went to Soho um, after I met a Moldovan woman which was trafficked here. And um, I had a talk to her. We, we talked for an hour. I showed her all my pictures. She asked me why am I doing this, why I am doing this. She asked me what I want to do with the, the book dummy that I had at that moment. She showed a lot of sympathy with the women in the book. And then we ended our conversation. And then as I was walking out of the building, she came up to me and she said, OK, I'll just take you to the places where I, was, where I worked first and then willingly. So she took me to Soho and she pointed to all the windows. And I actually think I managed to get into one of the rooms because the window was cracked. And she was telling me, oh, that's a stinky place, the, that window, that red a window light um, is a stinky place, but the other one is pretty, it's pretty okay, it's pretty nice. So I, I try to look at the, the little things that women are actually creating or doing in these new spaces that they live in uh, as a sign of, of still of their, you know, um, not humanity, but as a sign of if them being women. Just, just, just being normal women, not not stigmatized or anything like that. I mean, it's kind of similar that the dereliction and solitude back where they're coming from, and then when they end, and a room which is strongly decorated, and I just it, for me it looks like a mechanic uh, room, you know, and I was I I was a bit you know I didn't expect that. Um, it's interesting to go to these places. In one hour I went to about five rooms um, with a police inspector kind of um, masking the fact that I was taking photographs. So neither the, the women who are working there or the lady who is supervising them, apparently, uh, knew that I was taking these photographs. In this hour I met two women, both from Romania, uh, one was coming from a city two hours away from my native city, and the other one was coming from somewhere else. And what what reminded in my you know in my memory was um, that over her spandex costume she was wearing like a pink robe and she was wearing these tiny little socks and she just looked like a a girl in her own house. So I guess I was be trying to do with this project 
is to show it's not their will to be where they are and to be to be forced into prostitution um it's far from their imagination that they are going to end up here so that's the thin line that i've always tried to define with giving the title not natasha because natasha is in eastern europe apparently is a nickname for women who have the eastern european looks men would joke let's go to natasha or to natasha's and the women in moldova they told me that they hate this name because they've probably heard it so many times and this is for me kind of like the image that i'd like to end the series with it's still hope we were going uh, sunday we would we would go for walks in the park with uh, with the girls from the shelter that i became friends with after two weeks and they would enjoy just looking at the brides you know becoming a bride is one of the dreams of the girls in in moldova is something extremely important it's, it's it, they still hope they will be one day a bride even though they were as people call them prostitutes and i'll leave you with this image and um i think there's a lot to read into it <laughs>